birds are remarkable creatures. They can fly, they can sing, and they can even navigate using the stars in the night sky. And they are also so beautiful. They come in different shapes, sizes, and fancy colors. But is all bird color the same? Hi, I'm Linda, and today I'm going to be talking about some of the different ways that birds can get the color in their feathers. The first and probably the most well-known way is through the use of pigment. So here I have an American robin, and it's a very pretty, it's a pretty common backyard bird. Um, and you can see it's got a lot of different colors going on here. It's got this orangey red here on its belly, and it also has this kind of grayish brown. And all this color comes about through pigment. Grayish brown is mostly through the pigment melanin, which is the same pigment that makes our skin darker or uh, gives us the brown in our eyes. Um, this other pigment is special though, it's called a carotenoid and it's responsible for this orangey reddish color. Um, what's interesting about carotenoids is that the birds can't manuf manufacture them on their own. They actually have to get them from the foods they eat. Um, and carotenoids are made primarily by plants, so things like carrots, which are orange, they get their color from carotenoids. But what about hummingbirds, like this one? Hummingbirds don't eat plant material. They mostly eat nectar and some small insects sometimes, and so they're not able to get these carotenoids. And yet, if you look closely at this hummingbird, you can clearly see that it has red feathers. How on earth does this happen? We can get some idea of what's happening by looking at the feathers from different angles. So you can't see the red all the time. And only when you're looking at it at certain angles are you able to see the red. Otherwise, it just looks kind of black. And that's totally different from the robin, because with the robin, no matter what angle you're looking at it from, the color looks the same. The hummingbird's peculiar feather color is due to a phenomenon called iridescence. Unlike pigment, which is just a colored molecule that can be used in things like paints and dye, iridescence is what is called a structural color. That means that it arises due to tricks that the feathers play on the light. So if we were to take a super high powered microscope and look at the hummingbird feather up close, we would see these itty bitty layers. There's our best friend melanin again, and also keratin too, which is found in our hair and nails. What these layers do is that they interfere with the light, kind of like how a prism splits light up into the different colors of the rainbow. As a result, when you look at the feathers from different angles, they can appear different colors. But of course, hummingbirds are not the only birds with iridescent feathers. There are many, many others, including tree swallows, peacocks, mallards, or buffleheads. And all these birds use the exact same strategy of iridescent structural coloration in their feathers. Last but not least, we have this stellar jay. This is one of my favorite examples of feather color because it kind of blows my mind every time I think about this. So you'll notice that in the Stellar's Jay, there are a lot of blue feathers here. Now, would you believe me if I told you that these feathers are blue because of the exact same reason that the sky is blue? Let me explain. So first of all, light is a wave. And there's a general principle in physics that if your wavelength, that's the length of the wave, is larger than a particle, that the wave will just go right through it, right? Think about things like radio waves. They just go right through us and we don't notice them. But if your wavelength is about the same size as that particle is bumping into, it will not be able to go through and it will actually just bump right off. So in the atmosphere, there are all these small particles of dust and so on, and this, these larger wavelengths, such as red and orange and yellow, they go right through this dust in the atmosphere. But the blue light, which has the smallest wavelength, it's not able to go right through, and so it actually bounces off the dust in the atmosphere. This is called Rayleigh scattering, and that is why the sky is blue, from all of this reflected blue light in the atmosphere. And the same thing is going on in this Stellar Jay's feathers. Once again, if we were to take a really high-powered microscope and take a peek at these feathers, we would see something really interesting. So there's a layer of tiny bubbles right along the surface of the feather. And so when light comes around, it's the same principle. The red light, the orange light, the yellow light, the green light, it all goes straight through, and it's actually absorbed by another layer of melanin beneath it. But the blue light, it's not able to go through this layer of bubbles, and so it bounces off in every direction. 
and that is why we see the blue in these feathers from the reflected blue light. So to summarize, we have covered three ways in which birds can get their color. Pigments, which we saw in the robin, iridescence, which we saw in the hummingbird, and finally, ray leaf scattering, which we saw in the Stellar's jay. Birds really are remarkable, and there is still so much we don't know about them. So the next time you hear or see a bird out in your backyard, maybe stop for a moment and take a look. You just might learn something.